Stu Drop is to challenge Becky Lynch for the War Ribbons Championship at the Royal Rumble. Alex Windsor will defend her Rev Pro UK Women's British Championship against Charlie Evans at Rev Pro UK's High Stakes. Mask Caskins will face Kes Evans for the ICW Heavyweight Championship at Square Go. The winner of the Revelations of Divine Love Tournament will face Giselle Shaw for the Progress Women's Championship at Chapter 128 Technique. Former Young Lions Gabriel Kidd and Yota Suji will clash at Wrestle Carnival's Carnival of Champion. All eight entrants of the TNT Extreme Dead or Alive Tournament have been announced. Scotty Too Hotty will face Gene Money with Session Moff Martina as the special guest referee at TNT Extreme Frill Kill. And Joseph Connor's first match since NXT UK will be for North Wrestling NCL Championship in a triple threat against Liam Slater and champion Rory Coyle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to TNT's A Great British Wrestling Podcast for Great British Wrestling, as featured on Bodyslams.net, brought to you by Power 4 TV. I am your host, the Great British Attacker, Mr. Andrew Moore, and each and most, and I'm joined, as always, by the co-host. He is Big Daddy Dan Daniel Allen, or Just Dan for short. How are we Hello, doing? my friend. I am very, very well. I'm, I'm having a, a busy week, a good week, and um, looking forward to getting out to see lots and lots of wrestling in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, indeed. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, over the next few weeks, as you saw from our last show. Plenty of news seen from my lineup just now. Plenty of big news, and of course, we've always got the further roundup of uh, more stuff happening across the UK scene. Uh, we've got reviews, the latest from Power Four TV, TNT Extremes, Merseyside Massacre, Rev Pro UK's Live at Southampton, fifteen. NXT UK, and of course, ICW Fight Club, the latest of that. And then there's some, we've got some European news. Plus, we're going to be doing a couple of tournaments or fantasy booking our tournaments. Uh, we're going to do the Natural Progression Series. Uh, as we as said before, Progress has announced this. We'll be doing the Atlas Tournament and our own version of the Revelation of Divine Love Tournaments using our rosters as drafted Last week, here's Dan's great little picks out there, and of course, my roster as well. Uh, so, uh, we will be putting on a couple of fantasy booking tournaments. I think we should kick the show off with one, don't you? Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, bugger, I've left my book upstairs. <laughs> You've written yours, so I'll tell you what, I will do mine when you go and run and grab yours. So, I'm yeah. going to start off my no, natural no. progressions tournament. And I am going to have in it, um, the way the natural progression tournament works is you've got to have um, eight wrestlers who have been wrestling for under five years. They are our up-and-comers in the world of British wrestling. And I hope I've got my times right with all of them. So my eight wrestlers for the natural progression series are Simon Miller, Big Guns Joe, Two Bit, JJ Gale, Callum Newman, Scotty Rourke, Nino Bryant and Kid Lycos 2. I think that gives me a great collection there. Some heavyweights, some high flyers and some absolute standout youngsters. So we're going to start off with our first match. We have Simon Miller versus Big Guns Joe. Uh, start off with a, a, a brutal heavyweight match there. I'll just let Andy know as he comes back that the first match in my progression tournament is Simon Miller versus Big Guns Joe with Ooh, Simon yeah. Miller going through. Nice. This is oh. JJ Gale uh, with JJ Gale. Two bit versus JJ Gale hmm. with JJ Gale going through. Okay. Callum Newman versus Scotty Rourke. That's going to be our, our great match at the beginning. Um, Callum Newman going through. And Nino Bryant versus Kid Lycos 2 with Kid Lycos 2 going through. So we then have Gale versus Newman and Simon Miller versus Kid Lycos 2. Nice, nice. Of course, tag team partners, JJ Gale and Cam Newman for RevPro UK. Uh, they had a match against Aussie Open, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. And the winner is Callum Newman. And Simon Miller loses to Kid Lycos 2, leaving my final as Kid Lycos 2 versus Callum Newman for my Natural Progression Series. And the winner, my overall Natural Progression Champion, is Kid Lycos 2. Ooh, surprising. I was expecting Callum Newman to come out with a win there. You're going to have to tell me how Kid Lycos 2 gets past Simon Miller. 
Ah, now that is all down to speed, technique, and a cheeky baking tray. Of course. Good old baking tray, kid like us and like us, Jim. The new problem child of British wrestling. That sounds like a fantastic tournament, I must admit. Uh, some good matchups uh, you have. Uh, see, I actually did write mine down this week because last week I, I did all the preparation for everything but forgot to do my natural progression, my uh, progress, to, uh, sorry, the Super Soul 16. So I literally <laughs> made it up on the spot. So wow, I thought this I'm time impressed. I'm actually writing it down. Right. Okay, so the natural progression series for the Andrew Wrestling Federation. Uh, Alexander Roth versus Maverick Mayhew. Nice. Uh, Alexander Roth will come away with the win. Ooh. Corey McRae versus Joe Lando. Oh, that'll be fun to watch. Indeed, I've seen the matchup. They had a matchup for Ignite Pro, which is available on Powerful TV, and it's a great match. And uh, so that's why I put them together again. But I've got Corey McRae coming away with a win. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is Joe Kessler. Yeah. Uh, from Northwest Strong. And I've drafted in one of my uh, international talents, Peter Tihanye from uh, Hungary. Uh, but it will be Kessler who comes away with the win. And Keenan, Keenan Krishna again of Northwest Strong, he will be facing Leon Slater, uh, a superstar in the Northwest scene right now. Absolute phenomenal athlete, incredible jump. But it will be Keenan who comes away with the win with the technical style. Next up in the semi finals, it'll be Corey McRae versus Keenan. So we got the grappler versus the striker. This is going to be an awesome match. Uh, uh, definitely. And uh, I would have a Keenan. Coming through with the win, thanks to a little help of Scott Oberman, of course, who won the Super Strong Style 16 recently. Then it'll be Joe Kessler versus Alexander Roth. Uh, again, I expect this to be a really good match, uh, different styles. Kessler's a big, big lad, and uh, Roth is a again, just a phenomenal fighter and athlete. And I'll have Roth coming away with the win as he defeats the Northwest Strong member, despite interference by the young guns Ethan Allen and Luke Jacobs uh, so that leads to Keenan versus Alexander Roth in the final and uh, it will be Keenan who comes away with the victory thanks again Northwest Strong looking out there Sky Overman demanding that you know they make sure that Keenan wins and he does uh, I think it'll be a fun tournament and again it helps set that stage to the Northwest Strong are oh, going to be a dominant force in my uh, promotion and mm. uh, starting rivalries against uh, uh, the 8-7 of Alexander Roth and Roy Johnson. So something might kick off that way if we do a tag team one. And I do actually think they've just done the Dusty Classics. I think great, great, great grizzled young veterans uh, are in this year's group. Uh, Dusty classic. They've they've been in it twice before and always uh, lost in the set on the finals, haven't they? Always the bridesmaids, never the brides. Surely they've got to win this year. Surely, <laughs> <laughs> come on, grizzle young vets. So I'll tell you what, uh, with the Dusty you classic so. on next week, uh, we will book our own version of the Dusty Classics using our rosters of the Daniel Wrestling uh, Association. And the Andrew Wrestling Federation. <laughs> uh, sounds great fun. I'm well up for that. Okay, uh, let's get on to some proper news anyway. Uh, do drop or Pipe and Evan, because. Or Viper. Or oh, Viper. I still. I, it, it feels wrong to have to call her Do drop, but you know, she's going to accept it and she's happy. She surely seems happy, I guess. Uh, but, you know, she's a phenomenal talent, one of the best uh, big women you're ever going to get uh, an athlete strength speed for the size it's, she's just phenomenal and she can really tell a story in the ring yeah that again and uh i think i, I know she was had matches for a women's championship during the uk tour 
back in November, but I can't remember if she was facing Charlotte or Becky at the time. I can't remember if it was uh, who was the world champion. I think it was Charlotte at the time, so it must have been Piper and Charlotte, which I'm sure would have been great matches. But uh, so yeah, good to see that. Uh, Going to be at the WWE Royal Rumble, which I will watch because it's one of the big four. So I always watch the big four. Uh, got to watch the Rumble. Always got to watch. It was always one of my favorites. That and Survivor Series. I hate what they've done to Survivor Series now, but uh, you know, I wish they would just go back and just have. Raw people take on a, you know, a heel Raw team take on a face Raw team rather than this fake Raw versus SmackDown because they all work for, you know, it makes no sense. No. But yeah, do drop. What do you think she's going to win? Yes, Ooh. I actually do. I, I think they're going to go with do drop. Um, I think they need to put some variety because the belt's been on the same two or three people for the last year and a half. Um, I really think that do drop's going to take it and, um, I think then turn fully, fully heel and change name and go from there. Possibly. Uh, I'm assuming she's going in at the face. Becky's a heel, right? Yeah, she's going in as a face. Yeah, um, I, I I am bored of the Becky Lynch stuff, I must admit. I mean, I know I don't, I don't even watch, yeah, you know, I just read about what's going on and I'm bored of the Becky Lynch stuff. So I'm not sure if the fans are... Uh, what they're feeling like but yeah you're right it always seems like it's charlotte becky and uh bailey and sasha it'd be nice to see bianca re her rhea ripley maybe even nikki cross fight the part oh team nikki, Pipe. nikki cross has nikki. just gone full heel hasn't she yeah, teaming up Nikki Cross with Piper Niven or a match between the two because, you know, they can absolutely tear the house down because they know each other so well and that would be an awesome match. Yeah, I'm all for this. Do drop for the title, please. Yeah, and um, bring in Kaylee Ray and have a trifecta. At- oh, yes. ICW main event WrestleMania. Yay! ICW main event WrestleMania. Kaylee Ray versus Nikki Cross versus... Piper bloody Niven or Viper, not this, and make it an ICW WrestleMania main event. That would be absolutely amazing. That would be very, very cool. And it'd be a great match. It would indeed. And speaking of amazing women's wrestlers, let's move on to Red Pro UK. Yeah. Uh, So the news came out this week. Charlie Evans uh, will be challenging Alex Windsor. I think this happened on the recent live in London, like 58 or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, Alex wins finally uh, back in the ring. So she would deliver the probe and ask for an open challenge. Out came, uh, is she in Aussie or New Zealand? I think she's New Zealand. New Zealand superstar uh, Charlie Evans answered that uh, fray and she will now be challenging Alex Wins at high stakes. Although she did have to pull out of a recent Rev Pro UK show. She was due to face Mariah May today. Uh, but due to medical issues, she had to pull out of that match. Fingers crossed it's just temporary and she'll be ready for the Undisputed Championship. Yeah, these women are going to tear the house down. And each other apart. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, in the same championship wrestling, I'll let you take it, my friend. Yeah, Kez Evans will defend the ICW Heavyweight Championship against Mark Haskins at the 10th annual Square Go on the 20th of February. Um, This is a very exciting match. Square Go, obviously, will also have the massive 30-man match. Um, I dropped there, didn't I? A little bit. So 30-man match? Yeah, there'll be the 30-man match as well. Okay, and that's that's Um, the Square Go. So is that a rumble match then, the Square Go? Okay, and then the winner will get a future championship um, match against Kez Evans or Mark Haskins. Yeah, because that's how Kev, Kez Evans actually won the championship in the first place, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, no, no, he won the zero G light. At, sorry, yeah. got his first championship yeah. that way. Craig Last Anthony, one. that was brilliant. Uh, but yeah, this again should be an excellent match. Mark Haskins is now. You know, he's been very selective of his bookings while he was under contract with ROH, literally working OTT and a couple of Rev Pro UK shows. He didn't even work the rest of Carnival ROH shows. No. Uh, so he was being very, uh, you know, he was quite happy getting what, but obviously he has now been released from his contract as per 
the ending of ROH on the 30th, where everybody became basically a free agent. It's great to have him back on the scene, straight into championship matches. I guess you can't deny the fact that he deserves to be straight into championship matches. No, you can't. He's got that name. He's got that reputation. Go for it. And he's a fantastic worker. In fact, uh, we were just on uh, the Apron Bump podcast for their progress. It's 80 chapter 17. And we were talking about Mask Skins because he was a match uh, at the time. And he was taking on Rampage Brown, which is an absolutely fantastic match. Uh, that Apron Bump podcast is going to be out Wednesday. And I really, really go out and uh, check that out because... Uh, we drop in a few information of what we know about the British wrestling scene of now and of then. And uh, it was really a, a lot of fun. So very thank you to uh, Apron Bump for allowing us to come on the show. Next up, uh, Progress Wrestling. Speaking of Progress Wrestling, uh, is uh, so Giselle Shaw will be defending her women's championship, her Progress Women's Championship, against the revelations of Divine Love Tournament. Have I lost you, Dan? I think I've lost you, Dan. I might think, uh, try and come back off and come back in. Uh, so, Progress Wrestling, as I say, Giselle Shaw. Uh, will be defending her women's championship at Chapter 128 in uh, Manchester on the uh, 4th. Is it the 4th? Uh, I think it's the 4th. No, it might be the 5th. Or is it the 6th? Bear with me. It is on the 6th of February at the O2 Ritz in Manchester. Uh, as I say, Giselle Shaw shall be f- taking on whoever wins the Revelations of Divine Love, uh, which we'll be talking about later when we do our preview. Is Riho versus Mercedes Blaze. Uh, I think either opponent is going to be a fantastic match for Giselle Shaw. Uh, I'd really like to see Rio versus Giselle Shaw. It's a match I haven't seen yet, so I can't think of any promotion that's put that match on so far uh just i think it would be a really really good match uh, they also mentioned that chris ridgeway will be in action at technique as well uh will he be the champion and will this be his first defense because of course he is taking on Cara noir for the progress championship uh next week and again uh, we'll be talking about that when we round up uh next week shows uh, so check that out. Wrestle Carnival announced an incredible matchup. Uh, I actually predicted this matchup. If you go look at Wrestle Carnival, he get he dropped the hint for who he was going to be announcing against Gabriel Kidd, and it was a New Japan kind of thing. And I uh, went, I think I've already lost you again, Dan. No, no, you're back. He is. You are. Move. Mm, okay. Anyway, uh, as I say, uh, Young Lions, Gabriel Kidd, and Yota Suji are going to be clashing once again at Wrestle Carnival's Carnival of Champions. Uh, that's on the 30th of January in Nottingham. Uh, now, I remember uh, Yota Suji and Gabriel Kidd clashing during the G1, I think it was 2020. Yes, it was definitely, yeah, it was the 2020 G1. Uh, and he was taking on Yota Suji as well as uh, Yuya Emera in a bunch of uh, matches, kind of evened out by the end. I think uh, Yota Suji just won by a point when it came to points. But uh, they were fantastic matches. And that's when they had restrictions on what they can actually do under the new, uh, under the Young Lion system. They only allow them to do a certain amount of moves. So now they're both free. They have no restrictions. They had great matches when they had restrictions. I can't imagine how good this match is going to be. I'm jealous of you. Super jealous right now. I nearly I'm broke. I'm very excited. <laughs> I nearly broke my promise. I tell you that. I was very, very close to breaking my promise to Jade. Uh, we were. Did discuss it, but I said no. no. Well, uh, you've been very good there. Um, yes. I know this is going to be an amazing matchup. I know it's on a show that's going to be full of amazing matchups. Mm. And um, myself and the um, tribal, tribal leader Chief. of the Geeks, yes, yeah, the one. Um, 
he will be there with me, Stephen Selm, and we are going to have an absolute fantastic time. And we will be discussing this on a separate podcast in the run up to Wrestle Carnival as well. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I look forward to that because, uh, uh, you know, I may not be there, but I'm, I'm looking forward to so many, there's so many great matches. I can't believe how good this card actually is. Uh, I won't do a rundown right now. Uh, we'll do a rundown of it next week as a preview for our show as well. So many great matches, including the most recent matchup that they just announced, which is Tonga versus Ivy. It should be a, another fantastic uh, match. You know, the women are well presented at Wrestle Carnival show and uh, as I'm jealous and I look forward to, I look forward to hearing about it when you're on, a, uh, when you see it. Uh, so we'll be talking about that, of course. Yeah, uh, I should do my best to get lots of pictures up on our um, Twitter feed, which you can find at T and Tights Pod. Indeed. Uh, so really looking forward to Wrestle Carnival's, you know, Carnival of Jersey. Uh, champion of the Carnival Tournament? Yes, that's the one. Uh, speaking of tournaments, there's the TNT Extreme, and they've announced all eight entrants for TNT Extreme's Dead or Alive Tournament, which is on the 3rd of February in Liverpool. This is, of course, a Extreme Tournament. So you'll be watching this one, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Yeah. Uh, and there's a great lineup that includes... Tyler Devlin, Charlie Evans, Big Ethan Joe, Alex Colon, Lou Nixon, TNT Ignition Champion Cameron Solis, Aspen Faith, and Session Moth Martina. Session Moth or Session Goth? I think it'll be about it. She'll have to come down a session golf if she's going to have any chance against some of these, uh, including Charlie Evans. Uh, yeah, this is going to be an extreme tournament. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy watching it. <laughs> also announced is another match which I hope ends up becoming extreme Lizzie Evo versus Mad Kurt. Have you seen any of the lead up to this match of how it happened? I haven't seen the lead up to how it happened, but I have been enjoying their social media. Yeah, that's what I mean. The texts and the uh, responses. Are, I'm not going to go into it fully, but yeah. Basically, Mad Kurt talked himself into this matchup. He's going to regret it. <laughs> He's going to get absolutely battered. Normally, the crowd... Well, actually, the crowd do typically still cheer for Leslie F. Oh, she is a Liverpool girl. She may be a hill over there, uh, but I'm sure the crowd will be behind her 100% as she whips. Poor little Mad Kurt's little bum. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Also announced is Rory Coyle versus Clint Majera for the TNT Extreme Division Championship. Yeah, I believe Rory Coyle just won a deaf match uh, match on the most recent TNT Extreme Merseyside Massacre. Uh, I will be reviewing the rest of the show later. Of course, I don't watch those matchups. So uh, yeah. maybe if Big Daddy Dan can watch it for you guys next week and he'll give his views on the death match. Uh, I shall do that. Uh, Rory Coyle, because I assume he must have won to be challenging for the thing. But they've also got TNT Ignition Sky's The Limit, which is on the 6th of February. Cameron Solis to face JJ Webb for the TNT Ignition Championship. Shreddy versus Franco Varga. That is a big meaty matchup. RPD... Uh, RP Davies versus Sonna Durson. That should be a great one. Isaac North versus MVK Valkabius. Valkabius, uh, MVK, the most valuable killer. Uh, I, phenomenal. He's, he's a great, great new talent. Somebody worth keeping an eye on. They've also got Joe Kessler versus HD Drake. HD Drake. Very experienced guy, uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, Joe Kessler in that one. Uh, but they've also announced some matches for Frill Kill. They have indeed, and some great matches, starting off with WWE legend Scotty Too Hotty, who is going to be facing Gene Money at Thrill Kill on the 10th of March. Also announced is that Session Moth Martina will be the special guest referee, so that should be... A complete cluster in the best possible way. 
Yeah, I'm sure that match is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, Gene Money and Session Moth have their own all rivalry that dates back to Defiant in a match that still hasn't finished. <laughs> and still occasionally continues. It's still. kind of the um, Family Guy chicken fight. It really is, but obviously that's an author as not. But they might still, you know, pick it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, Scotty Too High is a legend of... Uh, what were they? Were they too cool? They were. Too cool, was that it? Yeah, uh, I remember Akishi. I wasn't a big fan of them. I don't know why. I, I never because got into them. They, they were the weaker link out of the main tag teams at the time. You had the Dudleys, the Hardys, um, Edge and Christian, and then Too Cool. Yeah, um, let's and, be the, honest, and the that. APA as well. Oh, throw them in there. the APA, yeah. Can't throw it. So, yeah. It's My first wrestling surprising. T-shirt. Quite surprising. Oh, nice. It's quite surprising that Tuchel did actually win the championships at one point. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, uh, I didn't mind Rikishi. I like Rikishi and the funky little dance, but uh, just too cool. Just I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what an amazing wrestler he is, and we know that he can put on a good comedy match. So with Gene Money, it should be brilliant. Yeah. Um, also announced, Mark Haskins will be taking on Scotty Rourke for the Ultra X Championship. You must be excited for this match. Yeah, this should be a really, really good matchup. Uh, obviously, Mark Haskins surprised everybody in return to TNT Extreme at the Merseyside Massacre. Uh, I'll be talking about that match in a little while when we do our reviews. Uh, but yeah, uh, he, of course, goes on to win whatever. But he challenges now Scotty Rourke. Uh, and if you haven't seen Scotty Rourke, very talented uh, performer. Somebody who will be on my next list of top 10 or uh, well, 10 young talents to keep an eye out on. So if you haven't checked out my uh, little article, 10 young talents to check out uh, to keep an eye on in 2022, I recommend you do. There's some absolutely fantastic young talents. I will be doing a follow up of 10 more talents. You can you should be keeping an eye out in 2022 in a little while. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, Really a uh, top performer. Should be a great match for the Ultra X Championship. Uh, TNT Extreme are doing some great stuff. North, they are indeed. Yeah, another company doing really great stuff in the north of England, the northeast. Uh, that's North Wrestling NCL. Uh, now, they've announced the main event for Losing My Edge on the 4th of February, which is, of course, at the Anarchy Brewery. Uh, and it will be a triple threat match uh, against Liam Slater and Champion... Rory Coyle. Uh, as I say, I think it's great to have Joe uh, Joseph Connors back on the independent scene again. Like Mark Haskins, he is a top name. He never got used right on NXT UK and promotions like North, TNT Extreme, uh, Wrestle Carnival. I think there's a lot he can provide. Uh, for those promotions. So uh, good to see him. And of course, he's a Newcastle man. So uh, yes, it is literally returning home for North Wrestling NCL. Should be great. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that one for you. We will indeed. So yeah, recaps. We now move on to recaps and reviews of British wrestling that has been put on TV for us to enjoy. Yeah, uh, we'll start off with Powered 4 TV. They literally dropped Merseyside Massacre 2022 just the other day. I think it was literally first. I think it was first day they dropped the uh, show. Uh, it had a great lineup uh, that included Lycos Jim versus the Kings of the North, Lizzie Evo versus Emerson Jane, uh, the Extreme Rules match between Aspen Faith and Rory Coyle, Robbie X took on Mark Haskins, and then Mark Haskins took on LJ Cleary. Then Chantel Jordan uh, took on Alexis Falcon for the Women's Championship, and in the main event was a triple threat match that involved Dean Mark, Adam Maxted, and champion Dan Maloney. As you can imagine, the first match, Michael's Jim versus Kings of the North, is absolutely fantastic. Of course, Kings of the North have the early advantage overpowering uh, little kid like us too very easily. But of course, you're talking about like us, Jim, one of the best technical teams, and they know how to chop down the big men. And they provided such a threat to uh, Kings of the North that Bonesaw grabbed the belts 
and Clock Tig Lycos 2 and then Kid Lycos to get the Kings of the North disqualified so that they retained their championships despite losing to the Kings of the North. Fantastic match anyway. Despicable. 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 Yeah, not a fan, not 100% a fan of the ending, but you know what? It was a great match. Lizzie Evo versus Emerson Jane. What can I say about these two women apart from incredible, fantastic, phenomenal, just beautiful wrestling. Beautiful women as well, but beautiful wrestling. Fantastic uh, match. Uh, Emerson Jane really showed how technically uh, savvy she is with some excellent uh, chain wrestling and roll-up pin situations. Lizzie Evo showed you exactly why she is a hard battling champion because she had Angel Hayes in the uh, at ringside. Although, to be honest, she didn't really help as much as she hindered in the match. But Lizzie Evo did come away with a win, and this was a really fantastic match. I'd say I can't stress how much I enjoyed this match. Uh, next up was, as I say, Robbie Aspen faced Rory Coyle. I skipped it. It's an extreme rules match. You know, I was, rather than me watching it and saying, I don't like it, I'd rather just say, I'm not going to watch it. Dan will watch it, and he'll give his uh, viewpoint on an extreme rules match. Next up uh, was the singles match between Robbie X. So this was originally supposed to be Robbie X versus Scotty Raw. But Scotty Raw, uh, I think, contracted COVID uh, and had to miss the show. So Mark Haskins was brought in and he was going to face uh, Robbie X. Now, this is the match he actually, Robbie X gets injured in. And it's mm-hmm. due to such a, a, just a small error. It was He went for a schoolboy roll-up. But uh, Robbie X's leg got caught underneath uh, Haskins. So when he got the roll-up, his leg just kind of really... And then, yeah, as I said, the match had to be called off. Uh, and then out came LJ Cleary, who'd already had a match during the uh, preview show. Uh, and uh, he had an incredible match with uh, Mark Haskins. And uh, really? considering they didn't even know that, obviously, they were going to be, you know, first of all, Mark Haskins and Robbie Epps were thrown together last minute. But LJ Cleary versus Mark Haskins was literally thrown together last second. So they just came up with the match on the spot. I just, just most matches these days usually talk behind the scenes, don't they? And say, yeah, we'll do this, 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 and this. Well, hey, Fade, K Fade. Hey, Fade. But uh, obviously, these guys, and it was fantastic. It really was. I, uh, LJ Cleary is a phenomenal talent, young guy. Mark Haskins, super. Uh, so yeah, go out your way, go see this. Uh, then it was Alexis Falcon, Chantel Jordan, uh, for the TNT Women's Championship. Chantel Jordan showed exactly why she deserved a shot at the women's title. Alexis Falcon showed exactly why she is the TNT Extreme Women's Champion. So great match. Uh, then it was the triple threat. Dean Oh, sorry, Alexis Falcon came away with the win, uh, as she is doing a new it's the uh. You know the DDT the BT gun uses? Yeah. So she does a, a rope-assisted version of that now, and she's using Ooh. that as the finisher. So uh, really good. And it looks it looks devastating, so it should finish matches, and thankfully it did. Uh, and then the TNT, that matchup, right? Adam Max said, Dan Maloney, Dean Allmark. Max said, and Maloney showed exactly phenomenal athletes. Dean Allmark showed phenomenal wrestling. A great match. I would give this match a solid three and a half sugars. Uh, they literally just dropped TNT Ignition uh, tonight on TNT Extreme. So check that out. I'm sorry, on Power 4 TV. So check that out a little bit later. The Ignition Rumble. Uh, I will be watching it tomorrow. And of course, we'll be reviewing that next week. And if you want to go watch these right now for free, Go sign up to Powered 4 TV. Use the promotional code TPOD, T E A P O D, and you will get one month free. After that, I believe it is $8.49 a month. It is fantastically worth it. You get TNT Extreme, Catch Pro Wrestling, Fight Nation Wrestling, Triumph Pro Wrestling, Reloaded Championship Wrestling. 
Superstar Pro Wrestling, uh, Ign- uh, Ignition Pro Wrestling, and just so many great British wrestlers and the uh, new American promotion that you're a big fan of, Extreme World Wrestling. There's uh, also FNW, um, IWE. I, did I mention it? I thought I meant it. But yeah, as you say, so many. So, go, you know, go on to sign up and use the promotional code. T and T pod. T pod. T E A P O D. Exactly. Go check that out uh, right now. Uh, should we, uh, do you want to do uh, NXT UK and ICW before we do? Uh, yeah, I'll UK? happily do that. Shall yeah, I start off with ICW for a change? Yeah, why not? Let's, let's, let's shake it up a bit. Um, mm. We started off with Charles Voice versus Daz Black. This, again, wasn't for the championship. It seems that Daz Black has um, stopped having being constantly for the championship. If you only have to fight for the championship and defend it once a month, why would you choose to do it more often than that? Yeah, fair play. So, indeed. Now, this match was outstanding. Um Bearing in mind there have been some very good matches on TV this week. This, for me, I think is actually the best one. Charles Weiss versus Daz Black was just absolutely everything you could want. There was all of the amazing groundwork, um, strikes and grapples from Weiss, the high flying from Daz Black, and just the smoothness of all the um, exchanges and executions. It was just brilliant. Um, Black hit a Spanish fly um, two-thirds of the way through the match, which just has to be seen to be believed it was absolutely brilliant whole match great and in the end um vice was dropped over the ropes and then hit by the curb stomp for the one two three um das black wins excellent match want to see it again um we then had um the the new squash team of balfour and hunter versus a new tag team coming in synergy synergy have come to icw the meat wagon has rolled into town. Yeah, uh, so is... Troy Ryan and Anderson Daniels, big boys. Uh, Very big boys. Um, one, one of them's a former American football player, uh, and the other one is a powerlifter. They mentioned powerlifting and rugby, and they were oh, the commentary. Maybe. I'm sure it was American football I had on TNT Ignition. Maybe rugby, it, I think either way. Yeah. It was big a brilliant boys. move where. Anderson Daniels lifted up um, Hunter into a delayed vertical suplex, walked across the ring, tagged in Anderson Daniels, uh, tagged in um, uh, Anderson, Anderson Daniels. Daniels, yeah, and passed him across, still in the vertical suplex position, who then took him along, kept in the vertical suplex position, then came back, tagged again, and did a double team move. They were brilliant. Very popular with the crowd. Um, they had a little promo section later on where they called out the whole of the locker room. And I think Synergy, having won this with their Bulldog of the Soldiers, the Synergizer, are definitely going to be a big thing in ICW. Yeah, that, that does, they've got a, you know, for me, I'd love to see them go and learn proper freestyle wrestling and become like a Steiner type team because they are so big. Uh, and so strong. They could be an absolute dominant force in wrestling, to be honest. Well, on commentary, they were compared to Doom. Do you remember Doom? Doom, yeah. Uh, Ron Simmons and... Uh, oh, who's the, uh, the natural... Oh, how do you it? Oh, God. What? So, Reed yeah, Rich, bus, no. Not, bus, bus. not Reed Rich. Butch, uh, Butch Reed. Butch yes. Reed, Butch Reed. Richard's yeah. Marvel Fantastic <laughs> Four. <laughs> like, I'm sure it's Reed. I'm sure it's Reed. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were a big power team, uh, obviously. And I saw him cosplay as Legion at Doom at TNT Ignition Show, and of course, it doesn't look out of place. But they're using the Stein, they're using the Steiner Bulldog. So yeah, for me, I'd love to see him go learn a bit of some like catch wrestling or some freestyle wrestling and become suplexing machines. Anyway, we then sorry. have Moxie, no. Moxie Malone versus Ellie Armstrong next. Um, I can't say this. This match wasn't very good. Um, lots of moves were off. The timing was off. Um, they're both strong hitters, but overall, this was only a two sugar uh, push. Um, 
Sometimes that's yeah. the way. It is. We then had Kez Evans versus Wolfgang, a returning Wolfgang, a popular Wolfgang. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, it it was exactly what you'd expect. Kez Evans begging off, cheating in every way possible. Uh, crowd massively behind Wolfgang. Um, there were chairs, there were knuckle dusters, there was some um, just good, hard wrestling. Um, in the end, it came very, very close, but Kez won it um, when he cold caught Wolfgang with the knuckle dusters and then locked in the blood clot clutch. Um, blood clot clutch is a brilliant finisher. Um, can be used on absolutely anyone, which I think that makes it so good. Kez wins. Kez wins. Um, overall, with the Dust Black match balancing out the Moxie Malone, Ellie Armstrong, um, with the arrival of Synergy and the return of Wolfgang, I'm going to give this overall three and a half sugars. Excellent. Okay. I tell you what, I'll do Refro UK now, and then we'll do NXT UK at the last. So uh, Refro UK, live in Southampton, uh, 15. This is available on RPW On Demand. Uh, first matchup was Dan Maloney versus Connor Mills. Big time matchup. Uh, fantastic uh, little match. Really enjoyed this. Dan Maloney comes away with the win with the power offense over Connor's more athletic, but really good. Uh, then it was Luke Jacobs and a Robbie X in a two out of three falls match. Uh, and uh, whilst the score was tied at one a full each, Dan Maloney came out and attacked Robbie X. So we didn't get a decisive winner on that. So if you remember uh, at the... Uh, Super J Cup. Super J Cup. It was uh, Robbie X versus Luke Jacobs. Luke Jacobs won. Then a few weeks back, they had a rematch with Robbie X won. So now they had this two hour free falls. They all both get a full leech, but Dan Maloney uh, has been targeting Robbie X O's as of late. Uh, so, uh, but still, really good matchup until it got a uh, thing. Mariah May versus Chantel Jordan. Uh, two. Amazing young women, really good match. Uh, Mariah May showed, uh, you know, she's that pretty little dream doll that she is. Uh, she had Sean Jackson on the ringside helping her out. Uh, and it was thanks to a little beauty spray in the eyes uh, for Mariah May into Chantel Jordan to help her pick up the win. Uh, overall, good match though. Michael Oku then defeated... Yota Suji. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Really. <laughs> how was the match? Really good. Uh, and now they did give Yota Suji a little bit of a buy out because he kept going, trying to do the super, uh, the shooting star press that he's been using as of late. Now, apparently, Gideon Gray told him that he shouldn't be using this move. So when he went for this move, uh, he was distracted by his own Legion partner, uh, Lucian Phillips, uh, and then uh, jumped down and hurt his le- hurt his knee as he jumped down onto the thing, and that allowed Dam- uh, Mike Loku to switch in the single leg Boston Crab to make Yosuji tap out. It was a good match, though. It really, really was. Uh, I personally, uh, you know, I don't think. Oku should be beating someone like Suji, especially with the uh, thing. Anyway, RKJ then took on Kenneth Halfpenny. This was really fun because Halfpenny is such a uh, pantomime villain of a wrestler. He really He's a proper is. weasel. He is an absolute weasel. Uh, the fans absolutely torment him. Uh, he deserves it. He's phenomenal in this role as this yeah and uh so at one point when he was having a chop with what they were doing trying to do a chop off and he was hurting his own hand as he was chopping rkj and rkj was just giving him these whoop, big ass chops of course AK, rkj came away with the win despite sean jackson at ringside shota umino then took in lee hunter in one of the best matchups of 2021 Really, this, this was brilliant. Uh, if I, I you, if you love wrestling, 
Go watch Shota Umilo versus Lee Hunter. This is brilliant. Lee Hunter really, for me, that was Shota Umilo's best match since returning on Rev Pro UK against, against Lee Hunter, to be honest. And uh, yeah, both guys did an excellent job here. And uh, I would definitely say go out and watch that match. It is well worth it. Uh, Shota Umino, uh, Lee Hunter. Then in the main event, it was Callum Newman and JJ Gale versus Aussie Open. And the story of this was JJ Gale and Callum Newman had no hope against Aussie Open. And <laughs> eventually, uh, the referee had to put a stop to it after Callum Newman was beaten up too badly. And then they beat up the referees again. And then that's why they went home to Australia. I believe they recently took on the Velocities in, uh, at PWA for Wrestling Australia. Overall, this was a great Rev Pro UK show. I, I can't give it any less than Four Sugars. Uh, I can't give it any more than Four Sugars either. But overall... Fantastic. Go check out RevPro UK live in Southampton 15. They still got a two week free trial, for God's sake. Can't go wrong. Exactly. NXT UK then, Dan. Okay, we start off with a video, as we have been doing a lot recently. Um, Walter is having his last stand mm. and will be taking on the amazing and incredible Nathan Fraser. Yes, in the main event. Mastiff and Stars, who can't cut a promo, then took on De Familia. Um, Rohan Raj is looking in excellent condition, isn't he? He is a rip man. He is looking in shape. And he even Tao Man wear. as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, as you say, uh, yeah, Rohan, he has muscles where muscles, I didn't know muscles were. <laughs> yes. Um, the other thing I noticed in this, Charlie Dempsey on the outside was talking constantly. He was doing what you would expect someone to be doing in that position. He was giving the advice. He was giving the recommendations. He was trash talking the whole way through, but without getting in the way of the match. Oh, he did it on a couple of games. Well, he, but they were perfect. No, he got involved, involved in yeah. the match. Very, um, yeah. yeah I, he, I like that, yeah, as you say, on the, on the ring side. And uh, I thought Dempsey would make a great corner man. Uh, I don't really like this using these guys as a tag team. I'd like to see them stay as like a trios or in singles, not as a tag team. So I'm kind of happy the Stiff went through, but I'm still not exactly a big fan of uh, Stiff. Stars yeah. Mastiff. Um, basically, there was a distraction um, from Charlie Dempsey on Mastiff. Stars got beat down and then Gallas interrupted. And Mastiff rolled up Raja. Yeah, and then uh, Dempsey just tried to start. It, it, Dempsey was wanting to take on all three by himself, but of course, De Familia, don't let that happen. So Taylorman was straight over, but, but Rohan, as you say, just drank and got caught. Right? Anybody the most deadly move in all of sports entertainment, a roll-up. Yeah, Mastiff doing a roll-up. No. It's, no, no yeah, wasn't, wasn't it a German? Actually, no, yeah, we hit a German suplex, but uh, couldn't really get the bridge. Like his shoulders were down to the mat, if I if I was honest. Yeah, um, but hey, Mastiff and um, Stars have gone through. Yeah, we then had another Walter video um, showing mm. some of the highlights of his time in NXT UK. Uh, we then had a video for Mako Setamora and Blair Davenport. So good news there; they're not over yet. No, of course. Um, we then had a video for the Irish wanker. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Amel versus Stevie Turner was next uh, with Ginny on commentary. Ginny's great on commentary. Ginny's fantastic on commentary, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, if they decide, if, I think she'd work brilliant working alongside a Walter in a period if they ever decided they want to do something like that. Of course, uh, Walter is now in a real life relationship with Ginny. Uh, but yeah, I think she would make a great mouthpiece. Definitely. Um, although I don't think she'd wear the tracksuit. Yeah, that's true. Well, she um, she'd wear the stylish dresses. Indeed. Uh, so this was a more equal match than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a bit of a squash for Amel. Um, but Stevie Turner, her strikes are so good. Her kicks mm. were brilliant during this match. Um, I, it was a good match, 50-50. That's what you get when you go to Japan and work for stardom for a long period. Yes. You learn how to um, kick. 
and Mel won it with the Hope Breaker. Um, yeah, it was it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Like a spine buster, that Hope Breaker. Like it's a good yeah. move. So it uh, is good win. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed this match. Uh, yeah, I can't complain anything about it. Ginny was great in commentary. Stevie Turner looks good every time. I don't like how she dresses, so I agree with Ginny. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Skid Scala uh, then was interrupted by Pretty Deadly and they were offered a match against Sam Grabwell and a partner of his choice. Who is Sam Grabwell going to pick as his partner, Andy? I don't know, but he's been all over Twitter trying to find a partner and so far he hasn't managed to uh, get one. He even asked uh, James Drake and uh, a <laughs> few others, but of course uh, they're busy themselves, so... Uh... He's still looking. It'll be interesting. I'm trying to work. I've been trying to work out who's going to partner with him. I just can't. I think. think I know. You think you know? I think I know. I think it's going to be the British berserker Saxon Huxley. <laughs> that would be a great team. Huxley and Gradwell. I like that. Yeah, I think it'll be a big power team, and I think it could be very funny with. Huxley just shouting yogurt constantly yeah, yeah. in the and, way that he does. And I think they'd come away with a win as well if that happens. Yeah, I fingers crossed. I, I think, think it would be great. So, yeah. Great. yeah. That, that's what I'm going for and hoping will happen. Uh, we then had another Walter video and an A-Kid Noam Dar video. And then we had our rather amazing, rather fantastic headline match. Very good match. Yes. Found it difficult to concentrate what with Nathan Fraser's interesting haircut and all-white outfit. I like the fact that he wore the all-white outfit to go against what he would be wearing to give the two different looks. Yeah, and to show the red marks from Walter. I don't, I, I, but I, I, I don't know. I, didn't, I, I like the shorts. I think he looks better with the shorts. So uh, if, if you ever listen to this, I'm sure you don't, but uh, Nathan... Uh, Keep the shorts, drop those pants, stop trying to look like Seth Rollins. I think this will be a, a one-off outfit for the Walter match. Hopefully. It was a very good match. It was not Walter's best match, no. but it was up there. If I was gonna get if I'm gonna rate that match alone, I would give it four sugars. I agree. It was a good match, but didn't feel like it. Elevated no. enough to that path that no, it was better than part. it was better than good. It was a great match. It was a great match. That's why we say this is four yeah. sugars. That's a great match. You know, a good match would be three, three and a half sugars. Uh, so a great match is four and sugars. You know, an incredible match for an half and a phenomenal match is like five sugars. But yeah, this is a yeah a great match. Uh, Nathan Fraser. He tried to make himself look like a threat, but I never felt like he was a threat like a kid or Ilya Dragunov was against Walter or even a Tyler Bate. Uh, so they're the, they're the matches I would put ahead of uh, this match, but I'd put match ahead of Joe Coffey's uh, match against him, Dan Master's match against him, uh, and Rampage match against Walter. I might do a list, actually, do, do a little rating system of uh, Walter's Give it five slaps. Five, five slaps. Love it. Yeah. We'll go with the slap rating for just that one off. But it was a great win for Walter. And uh, he was, of course, a... He was the guy that retired the Progress Atlas belt. Do you know that? Uh, Trent Seven was the holder of the time, and of course, uh, Walter abandoned the Atlas belt to go after the Progress Championship belt, which he, of course, won. Uh, Trent Seven then uh, picked up the belt uh, from Doug Williams after a vacant period, and he then challenged Walter and said both belts would be on the line. So after Walter won the match, the Atlas belt was retired, but it's coming back, apparently. Oh, well, there's going to be an Atlas tournament. Anyway, from progress uh, later this year. Uh, so the Atlas division was an over 205 uh, pound uh, weight limit because uh, that was the, it was kind of like taking the mick out of NXT uh, WWE 205 things. So 
uh, progress one more. We're going to have our own 205, but it's going to be above 205, so it's the Atlas tournament. Uh, I think Rampage was the first holder of the title, and uh, as I say, Walter was the last person to hold the title. But uh, because we use our rosters, here's Dance again, fantastic little roster. Yeah, I had a slight issue with this because I don't have that many men on my roster that are over 205. Um, so I've had to use a few of my tag teams in this one. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy no, it. That, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. As, as, as I, I use tag teams as well for mine. Uh, but go on then. Uh, what is your Atlas tournament fantasy book in using your fantasy roster? First match, Troy Ryan... Versus Lucian Phillips. Big boy. That's going to be a slappy, meaty match. Yeah, I like that one. It is indeed. And Troy Ryan goes through. His tag team partner next, Addison Daniels, takes on Lucian Phillips' tag team partner, Screwface Armoured. Nice. Heavyweight. We've had Ryan go through. Anderson Daniels goes through as well. We then have Doug Williams, a former champion, versus Joe Hendry. Nice. Of course, Joe Hendry is packed on the way. I think he's weighing about 240 right now. He looks phenomenal. He is indeed. And he wins this match and goes through. Mm. We then have as our final match, Big F in Joe versus Tristan Archer, my international that I have gone through. And in this one, Tristan Archer beats Big F in Joe using technique and style. Of course, and he's a phenomenal. He looks incredible as well. He does indeed. So that leads us on to a battle of the tag team. Ryan versus Daniels. They go in shaking hands. And in the end, Anderson Daniels wins with a slightly more experience and goes out shaking hands. Excellent matchup. Joe Hendry versus Tristan Archer. This match goes to a time limit draw. The bell rings because you can't have a time limit draw in a tournament, so they then go on for another five minutes in sudden death, and Joe Hendry wins, leading us to Joe Hendry versus Anderson Daniels, a tag team specialist versus an absolute master singles wrestler who obviously does go through and win. Joe Hendry is the Daniel Wrestling Association Atlas champion. Excellent. I'll tell you what, Joe, if you put Joe Hendry after that match, he takes Troy Ryan and Anderson Daniels under his wing and teaches him freestyle wrestling because, of course, Joe Hendry is a freestyle wrestling uh, gold medalist for uh, Brit- Great Britain uh, in a couple of uh, tournaments. So uh, I think, yeah, if you come away with that as a nice little trio, I think that would work like a good little team for you. But <clears throat> I, will take you. That. I will take that. I think that sounds like a great idea. Excellent. Uh, so mine, I didn't have that much of an issue. I do have uh, a few big men, although I did try to not use anybody I use in my Superstar 16, which I did. Uh, thankfully, you drafted in some of my tag team guys. Uh, so it started with Adam Maxted versus Brady Phillips. Oh, nice match. These guys are phenomenal. They look phenomenal uh, and they're both so athletic. And I'm actually going to give the nod to Brady Phillips as he beats Adam Max there and comes away with the win. In the second match, Big Damo takes on Gene Money. And (laughs) Gene Money battles hard, but he just can't overcome the power of Big Damo. So Big Damo advances. Next up, Charlie Sterling versus Shreddy. And after they do some muscle posing and uh, things, they battle out and it will be Shreddy who comes away with the win as uh, he gets a little bit of help. And then Will Cruz versus Brendan White. Do big boys, and it'll be Will Cruz who comes away with the win there. So, big Damo versus Phillips. Again, Phillips battles hard. He's got the power. He's got the athleticism. But Damo's just too much for him. And big Damo advances into the finals. It is Will Cruz versus Freddy in the other semifinals. And it is Will Cruz who defeats Freddy. And leaving in the finals, 
Big Damo versus Will Cruz. You've got the experienced veteran big man versus the new up and coming big man. Uh, but again, Will Cruz, he battles hard, but he's just not enough. And it's Big Damo who comes away with the Atlas Championship. If you hadn't had Damo win that, I would have questioned you. <laughs> yeah, no. You have to have Damo. And uh, I didn't have, I thought about putting uh, Joe Castor in, but I wasn't quite sure if he was over 205. I, probably, I suppose I could have thrown Luke Jacobs in there if I needed to, but uh, obviously I just chose not to do on that occasion. But yeah, Damo, of course, would be the winner of that. And uh, that would be the Andes Wrestling Federation Atlas Tournament. And the Atlas champion will be Big Damo going forward. Anyway, so we do some further roundup because there's a lot going on in the UK scene. There is indeed. Let's start with Kamikaze Pro Wrestling. They are in Tipton on the 4th of February with Kamikaze Live 25. Chantal Jordan versus Colt Miles. Man Like Doris versus the Kamikaze Kid. And on the 19th of February, Kamikaze are in Digba for Over the Top 8. Chris Ridgway versus Man Like Doris. And Sean Custom, who's the champion, versus Carlos Romo for the Kamikaze Pro Championship. That should be a really good matchup. Uh, UKPW have announced that just Joe Lando, he will be challenging Danny Black for the Interregional Championship at Blizzard Brawl on the fe- on 19th of February at the Falconwood Community Centre. Of course, just Joe Lando and Danny Black actually faced each other on UKPW's first match, uh, first sorry, uh, first show back. And it was a fantastic matchup. It was a last minute matchup. It's just Joe Lando came in as a replacement. And it was Joe Lando who picked up the victory in that. So will Lando be able to overcome Black and become the new UKPW Interregional Champion? Reckless Intent Wrestling have announced the Reckless Rumble for the 26th of February. 30 participants, one winner. And that winner will get a shot at the Reckless Intent Heavyweight Championship. Well, speaking of rumbles, Cornish Pro Wrestling, CPW, they've announced the Renegade Rumble. This is a mixed gendered rumble for the vacant CPW Renegade Championship, which I've seen. They've posted a picture of that beautiful belt. Uh, we know that Echo Reed, Jordan Sparks, Aurora, Finney Clay and Jez Gardner will be at the show. But will they be in the rumble? We shall see. Barracks Pro Wrestling, Chantel Jordan challenges Kia for the Barracks Pro Women's Championship on the 28th of January in Newcastle. Plus, Diamond Dave Andrews defends his Barracks Academy Championship in a triple threat against Jack Fisher and Gabriel Lee. Yes, uh, keep my friends close and enemies closer is the name of the show. Uh, British Wrestling Revolution, BWR, present Evo Breakout on the 29th of January in Grimsby. This is the next generation of wrestlers, including those trained at the BWR Evo Wrestling School under the watchful eye of Nathan Cruz. Uh, But before that, on the 28th of January, BWR Underground 9, Tom Fellwell will be facing Jet Marshall in the semi-finals of the Youth and Revolt tournament. That should be a great match. I expect Tom Fellwell to win. Ignite Wrestling Pro have announced that Corey McRae will face Warren Banks in an Ignite Championship qualifier match on the 6th of March in Borehamwood for their second show, Encore. Oh, what a match. Indeed. And if you remember, when we had Corey McRae on the show, uh, he had a few words for Warren Banks. Uh, for regarding indeed. Jurassic Pro Wrestling, well, so that should be uh, can go into this match. In fact, should we clip that and put post it out there so spark some a uh, bit more animosity between the two? <laughs> Why not? Uh, I definitely think we should. I think we should. Northumbria Pro Wrestling Society, the MPWS, have announced that at Southern Shakedown on the fourth of February, Gia Adams will return and she'll be taking on Evie. Bateman or Eve Bateman. Jurassic Pro Wrestling have announced that Hustle Malone will return for system shutdown on the 13th of February in Harwich. Indeed. United Wrestling UK, United Wrestling have announced that CJ Carter will face the debut in Joe Lando at day four, heart beating on the 12th of February in Oxford. Phenomenal Elite Wrestling. 
Um, I will be going along to see that. Um, since Laurie has decided that she did not want to team with Lucia Lee at Brave New World in Stratford upon Avon on the 26th of February, Lucia Lee has now issued an open challenge. I can tell you one thing. It won't be me. Indeed. I've noticed uh, Mariah May and Hannah Taylor have joined the roster. So could it be one of those? Oh, I hope so. Indeed. Uh, some good news for modern pro re, modern nomad pro wrestling. They've announced the second Tuesday night grab show at the Frog and Bucket in Manchester. Uh, Chris Ridgeway versus Kit Lycos. Mad Kurt versus Luke Jacobs. <laughs> Dean Allmark versus Martin Kirby. And Charlie Evans will be in action. Uh, and this, of course, is on the 25th of January, as I say, at a Frog and Bucket in Manchester. Uh, plus the postponed, postponed lo- uh, local Shindy Wrestling Company show uh, in Cardiff will now be on the 26th of February. So people who have bought tickets for the uh, event prior, uh, your tickets will be transferred to that or you can get a refund if you can't attend the show. New Riot Wrestling have announced their debut show, Cash, Culture and Violence, on the 15th of March at the Garage in London. That's in Highbury, I've been there. Mm. Eight competitors face off in four single matches, with the winners moving on to the finals, where they'll face off in a four-way elimination match. Two qualifiers have been announced so far, Warren Banks versus Lucia Lee, and Chris Ridgway versus Jordan Brakes. Ridgeway versus Brakes. I want to see that. Yeah. Give me. Oh, I'm happy to do that one. Check that one out. Uh, isn't it garage? Isn't that where Progress used to run shows before they went to the Electric Ballroom? It is indeed. Hmm, well, so uh, Black Country uh, Championship Wrestling down in uh, the Dudley area, BCCW, have announced that the Clockwood Brothers will clash with King Kelly and Jim Diehard uh, on the 28th of January in Tipton. Uh, season tickets are also now available for all of their shows. Uh, several different deals from singles to family tickets. DNA Pro Wrestling have announced that Warren Banks and Big F and Joe will clash at their It's In Our Blood 3 match at In Our Blood 3 show on the 19th of February in Ipswich. Plus, The Banker versus Damien and BDSM will challenge the lads for the DNA Tag Team Championships. And also, I've got to say, the posters for DNA Pro have looked brilliant. Yeah, I really like their designs, uh, so go check them out. But yeah, BDSM versus the lads, Charles Crowley and Clementine versus Alex Echo and Ben Jones. That's going to be a great match. Can't wait to see it. And of course, it will be available on Powerful TV. Uh, SWWS and South Wrestling have announced... That due to the injury to Harley Hudson, she'll no longer be challenging L.A. Taylor uh, for the Women's Championship at, uh, I forgot what the show's called. Uh, Instead, it will be Ava White who challenges uh, L.A. Taylor at the After Hours show on the 29th of January. Oh, that reminds me, actually, something I missed from the Phenomenal Elite Wrestling News. Um, Mm. Harley Hudson obviously will not be able to take part um, in the first show, which she was meant to be doing. Um, So she is going to be on commentary. um, Oh, excellent. Wrestling Elite. So, yeah, Uh, that is a nice little bit of news that I forgot to mention there. That's going to be amazing. And uh, Harley Hudson, if you, uh, I don't know if you listen to our show, you are the Scouse Mouth Powerhouse. We love you uh, and we wish you well on your recovery and uh, hope to see you back in the ring as soon as possible because she's a great talent. She is indeed. Um, speaking of Harley Hudson, Wrestle Island um, have announced the women's champion Alexis Falcon will be on Warren Banks for the Wrestle Island Championship at the Isle de Papel on the 20th of February in Birkenhead. Wrestle Island have also announced the Swedish women's sensation and member of the Andrew Wrestling uh, Federation, Alice Inc., will be at the Isle de Papel. Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, looks like it's going to be incredible. They've actually and that just announced more of the lineup. Uh, let me just find uh, it. 
they actually tagged us in it to let us know that they've announced uh, some more of the lineup, uh, which Thanks, will include uh, include Car- Carlos Zamora, uh, Danish sensation. RPD uh, will be at the show. Brian Adenson, Lance Rivera, David Grant, Carl Kingsley, Lucy Sky, Cameron Solis, Scott Oberman, Joe Kessler, Big T, and Chocolate Thunder will all be at this island show, La Isla de Papel. Uh, as you say, that is on the 20th of February. So uh, sounds like a great show. I'm going to have to do some Googling and find out what that actually means. Isla de Papel, the island of the people. I haven't got a clue. It sounds about right there. <laughs> uh, what, Creation <laughs> Creation Pro Wrestling. Um, after news and restrictions being lifted in Wales, yay! Creation Pro Wrestling will be able to go ahead with their debut show on the 4th of February. And one hell of a lineup, isn't it? It is, yeah. Nico um, Angelo versus Connor Mills. Martin Kirby versus Brendan White in a hair versus hair match. I hope that we don't have to watch the type of hair that they drew. <laughs> Yes, because if you know Brendan Wright and Martin Kirby, uh, they don't actually uh... have a lot of hair on their head. (laughs) Joe Lando and Jody Fleisch versus Lycos Jim. What a combination, Lando and Fleisch. Mm, Yeah, that's going to be one hell of a match. Uh, Elijah versus Nino Bryant. The OJMO versus Sid Oakley and Clementine versus Lee Hunter. That's not a match that I would have immediately thought of, but one that I would be very happy to see. Uh, according to Google Translation, the Isla de Papel is the Paper Island. Oh, ah, well, there you go. Indeed. Oh, okay. just interesting. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, go keep going. Triumph Pro Wrestling. Due to travel restrictions, Vaughn Vertigo will no longer be at Triumph's cruise control and Just Joe Lando will now face TK Cooper of Sunshine Machine on the 12th of February in Romford. Plus, Jack Torreno versus Richie. Yeah, they're putting together for a great little show at Triumph Pro Wrestling's uh, cruise control. Triumph Pro Wrestling Volume 2. Uh, this is, yeah, there's some great talents working with them. And of course, again, it will be available via Power 4 TV. Target Pro Wrestling in Carlisle on the 5th of February. Adam Maxted will be making his Target Wrestling debut against BT Gun. Plus, Martin Kirby and Kid Like Us 2 will both be in action. Purpose Wrestling have announced the main event for their Fix Up Look Sharp show on the 11th of February. It will be Luke Jacobs and Chris Ridgway taking on the undefeated NIC Northern Ireland collection of Charlie Carter and Osin Delaney. Plus, Man Like DeRees will make his return to the Merton Art Space as he faces Billy Hayes, who is still looking for his first win. Indeed. Uh, the Lancashire Wrestling Federation, LWF, have announced that at Lancashire, Lancashire Riot, they will be crowning their first ever LWF women's champion. There will be 15 contestants and only one winner. And we will bring you more news on that tournament as it comes. Uh, I believe people, Lana Rostin, Aurora Tevers are already in the uh, tournament, as well as Tonga. I think there's a couple of others, uh, but they haven't announced the full lineup yet. But we will be tracking this one because it looks exciting for LWF. Lancashire like Wrestling Federation. That. Anyway, yeah. what's happening next yeah. week? Okay, here we go. You ready? Go for PCW it. before the glory in Preston on the 21st of January. We have no matches announced as yet. Yeah, a bit of a shame. Uh, but we got Reloaded Championship Wrestling and Alliance again on the 21st. Paul Robinson versus Will Ospreay in the main event. Ooh. Callum Newman versus Warren Banks for the Reloaded Championship. Kelly Six versus Maverick Mayhew. This should be a fantastic match. Murdoch Miller Jr. versus CJ Carter versus Moss versus Joe Lando for a number one contendership. Great little fatal four-way. Evan Lee United versus The Rebellion plus Darcy Stone. Versus Sapphire Reed. And if you haven't seen Sapphire Reed, I really recommend checking her out. I've seen a couple of her matches. She is a young talent who has a lot of promise. 
Good wrestling to hell with good intentions on the 22nd of January. Jade versus Mad Kurt. Charles Crowley versus Brendan White. That'll be brilliant. Gene Money versus Hustle Malone. Mike Bird versus Charlie Evans. Plus, Tate Mayfairs, Cali Gray, Jetta, Tim Lee, Elijah, Joshua James, and Chantel Jordan have all entered the greatest scramble match. Yes, and that is only half the lineup for the great scramble match. There is still another half to be announced, uh, but I obviously haven't announced it yet. Uh, future wrestling, F U T R wrestling. Uh, it is the F U T R fourth anniversary show on the twenty second of January in Sutton in Ashfield. You've got Xander Zulu versus Brett Myers versus Mark Sanders in a number one contenders match. Brandon Brooks versus. MJ Grayson. Act two, Benjamin Harlan and Jack Nelson will be against the big boys of Bishop and Beaven. That's going to be a struggle for Act two. Plus, Lucia Lee versus Kaya. Oh, Kaya. Kaya, Kaya. Kaya. Yeah. And then there was progress. And that word was progress. 23rd in London. We have got Session Moth Martino versus Tonga. Dean Ormark versus Axel Tiska. Oh. Um, Dan Maloney versus Malik versus Man Like Debris versus Warren Banks versus Joey, Roy Wavy Johnson versus Jody Fleisch in a number one contenders match. Who do you reckon is going to come out on top in that one? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um... <sighs> Warren Banks. I reckon it's Banks or Maloney. I think it's time Banks does it. I think, yeah, for me, I, I think I said it actually when we did the awards that, uh, you know, Banks has deserved the title shot for quite some time. You know, he's had some great wins. So I think it needs to happen. I think Roy Johnson helps him win it. Nice. Charlie Evans versus Lana Austin will also take part, as will Gene Money versus Kid Lycos. And the tag team championships will be on the line as Sunshine Machine offer up the rematch against the Smoking Aces. The Revelation of Divine Love tournament final, it wasn't the Smoking Aces, was it? No, no, it is the Smoking Aces, yeah. yeah smoking right, Aces yeah. are champions. I need to have more... Um, Faith in myself. Revelations of Divine Love Tournament Final. Riho versus Mercedes Blaze. Who's your money on for that one? I'm still on Rio. I'm still on Rio for that one. And I think she'll uh, go on to defeat Giselle Shaw as well. And then finally, the championship match. Cara Noir takes on hard as fuck Chris Ridgway. Yeah, it's a toss-up, really. I can, but uh, I'm thinking there's the history between Banks and Ridgeway, so there's something to play with if Banks goes and wins that one contendership. But you've also got the fact that Warren Banks hasn't faced Cara Noir at Progress, so uh, interesting. I'd be great what I like is that I've got definitely, I've got no idea who's going to win out of that match, and I don't care because I know it's just going to be brilliant. Yeah, and of course, it's actually a first to three falls matchup with no time limit. So uh, it's going to be, yeah, really interesting to see who comes out on top and great match. Uh, progress, get in touch, send us some tickets. <laughs> yes, uh, anyway, uh, we mentioned the revelations of Divine Love Tournament. So again, using our fantasy rosters, we have put together our own fantasy booked revelations of divine love tournament i think i'll kick Your it off this time first, yeah. yeah my turn to go first in the opening rounds alex windsor versus zoe lucas charlie morgan versus Riho. tony storm versus laura de mateo and nixon null or tegan knox versus chantel jordan Mm. Uh, it'll be Windsor who comes away with a win, so she will go on to face Riho in the semi finals. And Tony Storm defeated Laura Dimiteo, and Nixon Null defeated Chantel Jordan. So it'll be Nixon Null versus Tony Storm. And it'll be a match for the ages, and Nixon Null will come away with the win. And then Alex Windsor will defeat Rio in the semi finals to leave in the finals. Alex Windsor versus Nixon, no. 
And it'll be Windsor who comes away with the championship in my revelations of divine love. So for the Andrew Andy's Red Wrestling Federation, Alex Windsor is my champion. That is nice. Now, I was really excited for this because I genuinely feel that my women's roster is so strong. I had such a hard time picking. Do you know, I, I've got 20 women on my roster. Do you know how hard it was to just name eight? I could have done a 16-person tournament. I could have do my own natural progression women's series. Uh, you, yeah, I think you probably could. I think you could almost have your own separate company. Um, yeah, I probably could, actually, 20 wrestlers. Yeah, wow. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy, and I've left out a couple because I'm saving them for other things. Um, so mine is our first match, Lizzie Evo. Versus Kanji. Ooh, first round matchup. Nice. First round matchup. And that's the kind of thing that could highlight any show. Um, mm. Lizzie Evo on top. Sky Smithson versus Mercedes Blades. Mm, interesting matchup. Yeah, Sky Smithson going through. Right. Evie Madden, the locksmith versus Angel Hayes. Angel Hayes goes through. Ooh, and Finally, in a match that you will really enjoy, Alexis Falcon versus Jordan Grace, my international superstar. Oh, he's bringing an international like that. Yeah. Alexis Falcon wins, much to everybody's surprise. Nice. There you go. This Push. leads us to Alexis Falcon versus Angel Hayes. Alexis Falcon wins. Lizzie Evo versus Sky Smithson. Lizzie Evo wins, leading us to Lizzie Evo versus Alexis Falcon. We know how good they are together whenever they compete. Uh, just look at the Team Two Extreme rivalry for one, probably one of the best rivalries in UK wrestling last year. I know this is a match that's happened before, again and again and again. Doesn't but you matter. know what? Doesn't matter. Everyone wants to see it. Fight forever. Indeed. Fight forever. It, it was so much of a challenge to decide who was going to win this match. Um, I may have tossed a coin. <laughs> oh. Um, because let's be honest here, having either of those as my champion, it's, you can't go wrong. You um, can't. The coin came up with a phoenix. It was Ooh. Lizzie Evo. Ooh. Lizzie is the champion. She does win with some slightly nefarious means. Um, does, she uh, doesn't necessarily win clean. Does Angel Hayes possibly help her? Because they are working together on TNT Extreme. And of course, Alexis Falcon, as you say, did defeat her in the semifinals. So she did indeed. That could well buy done. you some uh, booking. See, I, told you, I, I can do this booking. <laughs> Uh, as, as you can see, so can I, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Lizzie Evo is my ladies' champion for the Daniel Wrestling Association. That's excellent. I'll tell you what, uh, before we sign off, we've got some uh, some news from Europe. Passion yes, Pro have. Wrestling, uh, Hungary promotion, Passion Pro Wrestling. Uh, they'll be returning with Passion 4 as on the 10th of April. I've really been enjoying everything that Passion Pro have done so far. Uh, so uh, usually free on YouTube to watch with uh, English commentary by Dave Bradshaw. So keep an eye out for the information. We'll be uh, tracking that for sure. WXW Germany this past weekend was the Back to the Roots 2022, which will be available on WXW now this week. And I believe Andy will be watching and reviewing that for us next week. Indeed, I've been looking forward to this. It had a great lineup. Uh, I'm really, uh, I've seen some photos of the tag team handicap uh, cage match, and that looks very interesting. So, uh, yes, I will definitely be watching and resume for next week. The Italian Wrestling Association, IWA, have announced that Karen Brigante and Flavio Augusto, as well as UK's own Jordan Said, will be at their Roma de Ved et Imperia. Uh, of course, Zay, uh, Jordan Said will not be the only UK representation at this show. As previously announced, the Rev Pro UK undisputed cruiserweight champion, Michael Oku, will be there. Rising Sun Italy. Unfortunately, Francesco Akira is still recovering from a leg injury. 
Reminds me, must speak to him. And yes. will no longer be at Rising Sun's Flaming Retribution on the 22nd of January. In action are Domitiana Roy versus Tiffany, Steve McKee versus LJ Cleary, and Rizzo versus Rust versus Dylan Rose. Good to see some UK representation in Rising Sun, which of course is Akira's home uh, promotion. I remember was uh, when we spoke to Gary Ward, he talked about taking Robbie X and Chris Ridgeway over to Rising Sun. He did indeed. Yeah, uh, Danks Pro Wrestling, which is another promotion in Denmark, and Scott Oberman will be heading back to Dance Wrestling Pro, and he'll be competing for them at their. Viled Vinter show on the 5th of February. And no, I was not mimicking a uh what would be Scandinavian type thing. They literally the show is called Viled Winter, Viled Vinter, sorry, with V's. So just making that clear. I'm not doing it <laughs> for, for that. But yeah, Scott Overman, a uh, big fan of him, of course, my the Andy Wrestling Federation uh champion. And uh, leader of my Northwest Strong Stable in the Andrew Wrestling Federation. So uh, good luck to Sky uh, As we mentioned at the beginning of the show, Grizzled Young Veterans will be in the Dusty uh, Classics D Tag Team Tournament for NXT. So next week, we will be doing our own tag team tournaments as we fantasy book uh, some of our guys. I know neither of us have got eight tag teams on our shows we'll be having to put together a few of our own tag teams which should be interesting i've got eight tag teams have you got eight tag teams i've got eight tag teams how many what are your tag teams who you got i have got lycos jim destination everywhere kings of the north the legion ian skinner and charles weiss synergy the purge and of course the sheebles Ah, very clever. I was, I was going to wonder if you were going to put them in there. So we'll, we'll see if you do decide to get the shields in that. Women in that. Uh, I have seven, but I do have another tag team of uh, the eight seven Roy Johnson and uh, Alexander Roth. If I wanted to use that, I also have uh, the Dream Dolls, Zoe Lucas and Mariah May. So I might make my one a mixed gender tag team uh, tournament as well. I don't have to because I have another tag team. Because on my international picks, I chose the Arrows of Hungary. Oh, of course you did. The fantastic team. And of course, I've got Aussie Open. Oh, it's going to be so hard actually to book in this tournament next week. Oh, Dan's Wrestling I Federation think... Dusty Classic Tournament. <laughs> do, do we have our first time of going four versus four? What do you mean? I'll give you four of my tag teams. You give me four of your tag teams and we'll see where we go from there. That'll be interesting. I think we'll leave that for a little bit. I think we'll be deciding our own champions on this occasion, but we'll have to do some head-to-heads, especially something Head like play. a Survivor Series. Maybe a Royal Rumble with that coming up. We could do some sort of joint uh, Rumble oh, book. Yes. So, and then we'll uh, see if we can get uh, Stephen to choose the overall winner. <laughs> that would be fantastic. And I tell you what, uh, we miss you, the Tribal Chief and the Big Fat Geeks. Come back on our show as soon as you can. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, just remember one thing. Don't, don't feed the trolls! Exactly.